Hello everybody, it's Ben Dominator, and welcome back to another episode of the Ben Dominator podcast. Today we are on episode 9 of the podcast, and it is just going to be another solo episode, so just me on the podcast this time, just like normal. And yeah, this is the third time that we have been returning to the podcast consistently, and uh, it feels good to be recording yet another podcast. I always look forward to doing these. And, uh, yeah, I'm just glad to be here, especially after, um, receiving an update in Fortnite last week. Uh, it is Tuesday, we didn't see anything new in-game today. Uh, I don't even think we saw the Colossal Coliseum Galleries in Creative, uh, but I could be mistaken on that, uh, because I haven't really checked Creative much today. So, I'm not sure if that's in the game yet or not. If it is, that's pretty cool. If not, then hopefully we'll be seeing it in the near future. Uh, but yeah, we got an update last week. I made a few videos this week. I did a few live streams uh, of Brim and just playing solos, which is always really fun. I love doing solo live streams, so that was really fun to do. And yeah, we also got quite a few questions to answer later in today's episode. I always ask for questions in my community tab and on my Discord server. I also ask for questions from time to time on Twitter as well. So if you do want to follow me on Twitter... My Twitter is Ben Dominator. It will be in the description below. Same with my Discord server. And, of course, you can always uh, enable post notifications to get notified on videos and community posts as well. So, if you're interested in that, then you can do that. Because, uh, yeah, that's the best way to get your questions answered is to go on Discord or to keep up with the community posts as well. It, I don't really know how uh, YouTube does the whole community post thing. It seems a little weird. I don't know how it decides to, um, I don't know how it decides to pick, uh, who to, uh, to, like, uh, recommend the posts to. I'm not really sure how that works. I don't really see community posts at all when I'm browsing YouTube, so I usually have to, like, go to the person's channel manually and check the community tab. So, uh, I don't know if clicking the notification bell helps with that. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if it's different on mobile. I know mobile is a lot better with that kind of stuff. With that and also with shorts as well. It seems that like community posts and shorts don't get recommended to people at all on desktop or uh, on PC. But it seems that on mobiles or on mobile I get recommended shorts and community posts a lot more. But not really sure how that works. Speaking of shorts, I'm not really sure if I want to continue doing shorts. Uh, I've tried it a bit. I've done a few videos with shorts and some of like most of them have done really well but i feel like the hype for shorts has kind of died down a bit and i don't know if they're really worth doing anymore uh i did a short on the thanos thing that did really well they do well but i don't know it, it seems weird because they are very very good for just getting like short information out there like especially with things that i don't really feel like I need to make a whole video on. I really don't like making videos on entire things because I don't like to stretch out stuff. I don't like to, uh, I don't like to stretch out videos, uh, just for the sake of making the videos longer. So if there's a topic that I can't really make a full video on, but I want to make a video that day, shorts are really good for that. Um, but I, I just don't know, like, if they're gonna be helpful. I don't know if YouTube... Like, if YouTube Shorts are actually going to go anywhere, uh, I probably will end up still making them from time to time. Uh, but I'm just not sure how much I want to do them. Uh, it seems that people like them, though. So, yeah, let me guys, or let me know if you guys enjoy the Shorts. I'd be curious to know if you guys actually enjoy the Shorts. Uh, I like making them. I think they're really helpful for just getting, just making videos that are, are about topics that can't really be talked about a whole ton. Uh, but at that point, it's like, do, should I even be talking about it in the first place? Because I'm not really... My my channel's not really a great news source for Fortnite, I wouldn't say. Uh, I mostly just talk about the things that I personally am interested in at this point. So, I, I don't know. Should I be trying to cover every single news topic by turning them into shorts? I'm not really sure. Uh, or should I just make shorts on things that I think are fun to talk about, but at that point, I would probably want to make a whole video on it. So, it's a weird thing about the shorts. Uh, I did one, of course, a week ago with the Thanos Cup, uh, and I've done them in the past as well, 
I used to do them more often. Mostly I do them with kind of when a collapse skin's revealed. There is the new Loki skin today, so I might make a short on that, just talk about my feelings on it. But other than that, I'm not really sure what to do with the shorts. I'm not really sure. So yeah, let me know in the comments of this video, uh, or maybe I'll make a community post about it or something. How do you guys feel about the YouTube shorts? Do you think I should keep doing them? Do you think that they that I should continue them? I'm I'm curious. I'm curious what you guys think about the shorts because that's just something I kind of wanted to bring up. I wanted to bring up that a little bit today. So yeah, that that that's just kind of the discussion about the shorts in general. But overall, this week has been really really good for content. I think I still haven't been making as many videos and live streams as I'd like to. Uh, I really kind of want to get back into making things like like daily content like I used to. I mean, I, I'm always on and off with it. Sometimes I'm making daily stuff. Sometimes I'm making like two to three videos a week. Uh, overall, I still do post a lot, but I kind of miss when I used to post like all the time. <laughs> and I, I feel like I still post consistently, but I don't know. I kind of I kind of feel like I need to get back into the, the content grind, especially now that I have way more time. It, it's weird how how now that I have way more time to make content, uh, I haven't been spending as much time making content. I mean, I have been pretty busy with other things as well. But um, making content's not like the, uh, the main thing I do all the time, which I kind of want to make it like my main thing, especially when I'm trying, I'm trying to get to, to the point where I can be monetized. So I think making more videos in general, just uh, making a ton more content, live streaming a bunch more, I think that's going to be super helpful for the channel. And I think I should like prioritize this time that I have to do that more, uh, especially when I haven't even been playing Fortnite that much. So it's not like that's taking up much time either. So when I'm not playing Fortnite and when I'm not doing other things, I should definitely make more videos because I, I really do like making videos and I kind of miss making stuff consistently. And I think bringing back the podcast is one of those things where it's like, yeah, we're getting back into it. We're getting back into kind of how the channel used to be. Uh, when I first started making Fortnite stuff, uh, I mean, it's always been, it, it's never really fallen off, but I think that bringing back the podcast is one step to uh, kind of bring back the not really daily videos because I don't want to burn myself out, but just consistent videos and just a bunch of bunch of different stuff from the channel. Maybe even start experimenting a bit more. I'm not sure. Uh, and it's conflicting too because I want to make a bunch of new videos. I want to make a bunch of like uh, I, I just want to make a bunch of content in general. But then I also want to spend more time to make more long form, more kind of better edited. Uh, more like et like video essay content on Fortnite, which those videos, those kinds of videos, I've done a few of them. Uh, the main ones, the main videos that I've made that have taken a long, long time to script and edit and everything uh, have been kind of the history of Fortnite pickaxes and then also the Season 7, the Ultimate Season 7 prediction video. Both of those videos took an extremely long time to edit, film, or like just record and um, to to script. And, um, I, I just don't have the ability to make those kinds of videos all the time. Because, uh, I need to stay, like, I need to stay relevant. I need to make content often. That's the thing with Fortnite content. You can't just, um, you can't make, like, one video, like, every two weeks. Because, uh, if, if every single video I made was like those videos, then it would take a very, very long time to actually... To actually make them, so uh, I won't be releasing content as often. But I want to release content more often, so it's conflicting. I want to release content more often, but I also want to make higher quality, more like better edited, scripted videos as well. And I'm trying to find a way to mesh those together. I think the way I've been doing it is pretty good. Just making most for the most part, just making commentary videos, uh, like two to three commentary videos a week. And then on top of that, working on some kind of big video in the background. The only problem is keeping it relevant as well. Thinking of a good idea and keeping it relevant is the main difficulty with that. Because they take a long time and Fortnite moves very fast. So if I want to make a very highly detailed video on a certain topic, but then the topic isn't relevant by the time I finish it, then what's the point? I mean, I've already had a ton of video ideas that I've wanted to do that aren't even like highly edited videos that I just 
haven't made because they weren't aren't relevant by the time I actually get around to doing it. So yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that I want to do. There's a lot of stuff I want to do. I think that I I just I want to make more content. I want to I want to stream a lot more. And I know I say this every week. I say this all the time, but uh, I did a solo stream uh, yesterday as I'm recording this and as I'm releasing it too. And uh, I just want to I want to do that more. I want to do more solo streams. People seem to like it. They definitely don't get as much like uh, viewership as Brimorale streams, but. I don't really have a problem with that because the chat is way more active in the solo streams. Uh, I don't know why it is, but it seems that whenever I'm streaming solo, like by myself, it seems that the chat's a lot more active, uh, even when it's not Brim Morale. Because Brim Morale, I get it why the chat's the chat's active in Brim Morale, but uh, of course people are playing the map, so not everybody has the time to chat and play the map. And then there's also people who like to watch streams and not chat at all. And I'm one of those people, so I completely understand. Um, so it's weird to me that, like, <laughs> uh, even when I'm playing... Like, I could play squads with the dev team. And there could be, like, 15 people watching, but no one will be chatting. Which is really, really interesting. But if I'm playing solos, and there's, like, 10 people watching, the chat's going to be way more active. And uh, that's why I like streaming solos a lot more, because... I get to talk with the chat, and it's kind of like the Ben Dominator podcast in a way that I kind of get to answer questions and stuff. But it's a bit more interactive, and I'm also playing Fortnite, even with my Terrapool gameplay in the background. Which is another thing, I want to get better at Fortnite, and I think solo streams would be a good way to do that. Just to kind of stream solos like every other day or every day, and just be like, I'm going to dedicate this time to kind of just try and improve at Fortnite, and stream the process, and stream... Stream me just getting better at the game, and I might just start, like, a little stream series being, like, uh, like, road to being a better Fortnite player and stuff like that. Uh, the one reason I don't really want to do that, though, is because if I advertise the streams like that, then I'll probably get a lot of people coming into the streams and <laughs> trying to give me, like, tips and, uh, trying to, like, give me pointers and trying to teach me how to be good, which isn't a bad thing inherently, but it can get pretty annoying if you're trying to do something and you have like 20 people in chat being like no no you got to do this you got to do this and it can get kind of backseat gaming so i might try one of those streams just to see how it goes uh but for the most part i do like doing the streams and having the chat just be kind of chill and asking questions and stuff it's not really ever about the gameplay itself and uh i like that i like that i don't want to stream and have everybody in chat be talking about my gameplay because uh it's the, I just I just like having the gameplay be what's happening in the background and then being able to chat with people and talk with people is the main forefront because I like to think that people like to come to those streams just to kind of hang out with me, you know, and uh, just to kind of chat and not necessarily for my gameplay because, let's face it, I'm not very good at Fortnite. It's probably not that fun to watch me play, uh, especially when I'm just like doing challenges and stuff. But I think, I think it can be uh, said that it could be entertaining for some people to just kind of sit and chat with me uh, especially when it's just me and uh it it's kind of harder to read chat and stuff when i'm playing brim and when i'm doing like stuff with other people so yeah i think that's kind of the that's the that's the that's what's good about doing the solo streams and i want to do this more of course i'm gonna still be doing brim streams as much as possible every single friday at the very least and yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna be. That's what I'm gonna be doing. So hopefully more videos, more commentaries, and then more live streams, especially more solo live streams. Just playing VR, just trying to get better at the game, and hopefully you guys will be there too, to be along that journey with me as well. And I think that would be pretty fun. I think that would be a good direction to take this channel. It's kind of something. I mean, it's not really a new direction, but I think the main plan for me is just make more consistent make like commentaries more consistently and then stream more consistently and then every now and then work on some kind of big project in the background and then release a more highly edited uh bigger project and then yeah i think we'll i think we'll be good that's that's kind of the plan so hopefully i can keep up with that <laughs> hopefully i can do everything i want to do and uh, i'm excited to i'm excited to just stream more i'm excited to make more content this season, I feel like, has been kind of hard to make videos for because not a lot of Fortnite news has been happening as of late. I think the season 
has been kind of dry when it comes to content. I don't know if that's just me. Especially the next coming week, uh, Epic Games is on their vacation, which explains why we didn't really get anything in today's update. And uh, I do hope they really enjoy their vacation. I think that uh, it is very important for them to get vacations in the summertime and the wintertime as well. So, yeah, uh, of course, content's going to be a little dry for the next two weeks. Uh, we're going to be seeing some new skins in the item shop. We're going to be seeing uh, maybe an update next Tuesday, but we might not even see that because that would technically still be during the vacation time. But I'm sure the update is already finished. It's just pushing out that update. I'm not sure if they're going to be willing to do that. We'll just have to wait and see. So if we get an update next Tuesday, I'm not sure. Uh, you would think so, but it's not It's not a guarantee. So we'll see what happens. The Cosmic Summer is only supposed to be a two-week-long event, though. So I suspect we probably would get an update. And if we do get an update, please, please bring, bring, bring out an AXO. Please bring out a new Axo at a style or something. That would be really cool to see. But uh, again, we'll just have to wait and see. I, I feel like if they don't bring out something Axo during the summer, then uh, we probably won't see it for a long time. I feel like since Axo is like a summer skin, he came out in August last year. I think that it would make most sense for him to receive some kind of new skin or edit style in August or late July this year. So maybe not next update, maybe more towards the middle of the season. That's what I'm hoping, and if that doesn't happen, then hopefully next summer we'll have to wait and see. Uh, because it's just, as you, everyone probably knows at this point, Axo is my main skin. He is my favorite skin in the game. And uh, I'm definitely going to be doing something to celebrate his uh, his one-year anniversary from being in, released in the item shop. That is coming up pretty soon. That's going to be in August. So that's exciting. Um... And, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a really special skin to me. I, it's one of my favorite, or it is my favorite skin in the game. Um, and I think that it's kind of a, it's become kind of like an icon for this channel. Axo has kind of become the, the mascot of my channel. And, uh, I just really want to see him get something. I want to see him get some kind of new skin. I want to see him get some kind of new edit style. Literally anything. Even just like a glider or, or like a contrail or a spray something would be really really cool because I we've seen him slowly kind of become more prevalent uh kind of he's he's been showing up in more trailers he showed up in the season trailer uh for the season he showed up in the battle pass trailer he showed up in the NBA trailer uh he was like very prevalent in that that was like the first main like the only cinematic trailer I think he's been in and um I feel like he's he's rising the ranks, and I, I'm really happy to see that. I think he's one of the most... I I, I want to say he's, like, very underrated, but he's, he's a very popular skin. You just don't see him talked about a lot. Like, especially when he first came out around Season 3, Season 4. You saw him in the lobbies all the time. At least I saw him in lobbies all the time. Um, and he... Like, I feel like a lot of people run the skin. Maybe not as many as they used to. But I feel like a lot of people to run the skin, I think the, the skin sold very, very well, from what I can tell. Um, but he's just not talked about a lot. He's not talked about, not a lot of fan art is made of him, not a lot of people on Twitter are mentioning it. Not not something like a lot of like people run now. And uh, yeah, I think, I think he really needs some kind of new variant or some kind of new edit style to kind of, uh, kind of, bring him back into the hype a little bit but epic Games says definitely i think i think axo is one a skin that epic is proud of and i think now that he's trying like showing up in trailers and stuff makes sense because usually especially with the cgi trailers it takes a while for them to actually make the cgi model and a lot of those trailers have been planned out for a long long time and uh when it comes to like the nba trailer and stuff that's probably like the first time they were actually like able to use the AXO CGI model because a lot of times like a skin can come out, come out, but it'll take a few months for them to kind of start showing up in new trailers and stuff like that. Because yeah, it takes a while, and I think AXO is such an iconic skin in the game. I think it's really cool to see him kind of show up and stuff. And and now it's it's my main skin. It's kind of the mascot of this channel, and. uh that's why I just I just want to see him get more love. I think it would be really, really cool. And of course, there's a lot of other skins that are also deserving of it as well. 
Uh, skins like Slurp Leviathan and stuff I really like as well. Just really, really cool stuff. And yeah, I just hope, I hope Axo gets something. I think that would be really cool. And that's kind of like my most anticipated thing at this point for, for Fortnite cosmetics is just something Axo related. Some new edit style, some new something. It would be really, really cool. And another really cool thing that I really want, um, that probably will never happen, but this season will be a perfect time to do it. I've talked about this before as well in videos and stuff, but some kind of Gravity Falls collab would also be really cool. Uh, I'm really hoping that that would be a thing that happens this season, especially with the Rick and Morty stuff. I think seeing some kind of Stan or Stanford skin would be really, really cool and would make a lot of sense for this season. Uh, especially because the universes of Rick and Morty and Gravity Falls are so connected, it would make a lot of sense. But, who knows? Epic Games, I, the main reason I think they wouldn't do it is because Gravity Falls isn't really relevant anymore. Uh, it's still insanely, like, popular. People talk about it all the time. It's kind of become one of those nostalgic shows at the, at this point for a lot of people. I think that Due to the fact that it isn't receiving anything new at the moment, and probably never will, I don't think it's going to be in the game, uh, because I feel like they wouldn't... Most of the time when collabs come out, it's due to the fact that they want to advertise. Uh, for example, Rick and Morty, they're advertising the new season, season 5 of Rick and Morty. That's why Rick came to the game this season, and uh, it just worked out. And Loki is coming to the game, of course, in the crew pack, and that is to advertise the brand new show on Disney+. Plus. So, all these things line up, for the most part. Uh, even, like, Deadpool coming, I think that was meant to kind of advertise Deadpool 2. Uh, and, like, Gravity Falls wouldn't make a lot of sense, because what are they advertising? But then there's other things, like, the whole Marvel season, like... I guess they were kind of advertising new Marvel comics, I think? I'm not really sure. Of course, the Batman Zero stuff is to advertise the new Batman comics. With Fortnite, all this kind of stuff, most of the collab stuff is to, like, advertise things. Uh, but then we get things like Thanos. Like, what are they advertising? Like, Avengers was years ago, so why are they advertising it now? There's always stuff like that, too. So it's it's interesting. Some um, For the most part, collabs are usually introduced to advertise things. But there's some instances when they're not. Uh, but I don't think Gravity Falls would be the case with that. I don't think that they would want to collab with Gravity Falls because I'm not sure if it's necessarily relevant enough at the moment. And also, since they did do the survey a while back, kind of showing off all the different things that they were thinking of, Gravity Falls was included in that survey, but so was Rick and Morty as well. But uh, I feel like Gravity Falls, I'm not sure if that would be one of the ones that performed well in the survey compared to other shows. So I'm not really sure of the... I feel like relevancy is a huge factor when it comes to these collabs. But there's also another... <laughs> there's also cases of that not being true. So it's weird. It's, it's very interesting. Especially if you look back on Season 5. Like, the whole God of War collab didn't really make sense because there wasn't... I mean, a new God of War game did get revealed around that time but i feel like it was a lot earlier than then and then because there was a sony state of play but i feel i think that was a few months earlier and then there was things like the gi joe collab which i'm not sure if gi joe was really doing much i think they were selling a new line of figurines uh but i'm not exactly sure there was kind of the there was the alien collab and the predator i don't know if those were receiving any new movies around that time so those might be outliers as well but Overall, I feel like most collabs do have something that they're advertising. Uh, they normally line up in that regard, but sometimes they don't. So, <laughs> I'm hopeful of something Gravity Falls. I really do want it. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. And it's one of those things where, I at first, I kind of just made a theory on it in my Season 7 prediction video because uh, UFOs, aliens, Gravity Falls is, has an episode about aliens and stuff. Wouldn't that be funny? Because there was all these, like, there's also all these, like, ciphers and things that you had to decrypt with the teasers. And I was like, oh, that's kind of like Gravity Falls. So that would be funny if we did it. It probably would never happen. And then Rick came to the game and I was like, wait a second, hold up. <laughs> this could actually happen. I mean, I probably won't. Again, it probably won't. 
it was in one of the surveys, but that doesn't mean it's happening. There's a lot of things in those surveys, but Epic was at least thinking about it at one point, which is pretty exciting, but I don't think it's going to happen. And yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Unlike the whole AXO thing, I, I think AXO has to get some kind of new edit style or some kind of new skin one, one of these days. Whether it be this year or next year, it has to happen at some point. In terms of Gravity Falls, though, I don't think it's going to come to the game. It's mostly just wishful thinking, but the evidence is there. The evidence is there, but there's been evidence for a ton of other things as well. There's the... And it's not very strong evidence either. It really isn't. Uh, we do know... Um, me and the dev team have talked about this too. Um, mostly me just kind of talking about it with them. And uh, I think we found, we found a tweet of... Uh, Donald Mustard saying that he watched Gravity Falls and this was like a year ago, but he he's watched it and he's really enjoyed it, um, and he tends to put things that he really enjoys in the game. But again, that's just another piece of what evidence. That's probably pretty flimsy evidence if I'm being honest. So it's mostly just wishful thinking. I just wanted to talk about it because it's something that I've really wanted to see. And if it does happen, then you can come back to the podcast and uh, be like, hey. It happened. It happened, and you thought it wouldn't, but it did. <laughs> uh, because I want it to happen. There's things that are pointing t to the fact that it could happen. Um, but me, personally, I don't believe it's going to happen. I think it's just really fun to talk about. I think it's fun to think about. But um, I personally just don't think it's going to be a thing. I just really want it to be a thing. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how I, how I feel about that. And I haven't seen a lot of people talk about a Gravity Falls collab. I've seen a few people on Twitter mention it, uh, but it's not like a super popular theory. And I don't want it to become a super popular theory because at that point it gets really annoying. And then when that happens, a lot of people kind of start to uh, pretend like it's true. And then when it doesn't end up happening, people get disappointed. And that's why I hope that that doesn't become a big theory. Uh, unless Epic like actually just straight up hints at it. Um... But since they haven't, then I hope that it doesn't become a popular theory because that could be very bad for the community. I've made a whole video talking about how I feel about Fortnite theories. Overall, I don't like a lot of them because a lot of them act like they're fact and then people get disappointed and rumors start to spread and it gets very toxic very quickly, especially in the Twitter community. And uh, yeah, I made a whole video about that. You can go watch it. And uh kind of sums up my thoughts on that. I don't want to get into that whole tangent here. Uh, but yeah, that, that's what that's about. But yeah, overall, I'm excited for future cosmetics. This update in general has had amazing cosmetics. I will say that it's a bit sad that the summer event is only going to be two weeks long. By the time the next update comes around, the summer event's going to be over, which is going to feel weird because it's like summer's still going to be around. Like summer's just getting started, I feel like, at least where I am. So, it's it's interesting. And then, yeah, after that, will we see more summer skins? I really hope so. I really hope this update is just the first we see of getting a bunch of cool summer skins. Because last season, in Season 3, Chapter 2, Season 3... I know I talk about Chapter 2, Season 3 a lot, but uh, bear with me. Uh, chapter 2, Season 3, was it had so many good summer skins. And it was during the whole season. Because we had the summer event, but even after the summer event, we got new summer skins because it was still summer. Pretty much that whole season took place during summer. I mean, Axo was a summer skin, and he came out in, like, the final update of that season. Uh, so, it's interesting. I hope we get more summer skins after this update. I really do. I hope that the whole summer vibes don't end here. I hope that the rest of the season, at least up until, like, August, is still summer-themed. Uh, because they've done that with winter events, I feel like. We don't... I mean, maybe, like, the last winter event we only really got one leak like one update full of skins i guess it's weird i feel like we get a lot more skins for halloween and the uh and christmas i just kind of wish we got more summer skins and i feel like in season three we got a ton i feel like this season well we've gotten a good a lot of good ones i kind of want a few more <laughs> and maybe that's a lot to ask uh i feel like i think we could use a few more summer skins in the next update Hopefully it doesn't go back to just being a bunch of uh, normal skins. I mean, normal skins are fine too, uh, especially if they're creative. But I do really like the summer skins. I like the summer variants. 
Um, not a lot of the skins we got were original, but I'm fine with that because they look so good. Like, Summer Midas looks amazing. Summer Jewels is pretty good. Uh, Summer Brutus is awesome. And uh, we should be getting Summer Crystal tonight in tonight's item shop. Summer Brutus is still yet to release. Uh, that might be the last Summer skin that they release. And then uh, hopefully Summer Drift comes back to the item shop soon. Because that's a skin that I've been wanting for a very long time. I just have never had the chance to buy it uh, until this year. So hopefully this year I'll actually be able to pick it up. And uh, hopefully it actually comes back. It should come back because it has a bundle in the app shop. And why wouldn't it? it why, ah, why wouldn't it? It's one of the most popular summer skins in the game. So I hope it comes back. I hope it re-releases. I'm sure it will. Uh, I just really want to pick it up because it's a very, very nice skin. And it's one that I'd like to use pretty much all year round, even when it's not summertime. Because it's very good. I, I really like the original Dif Drift skin. And I think the Summer Drift is overall just a cleaner version of it. Uh, I, I Again, I will still use the original one. Just for those later edit styles. Uh, but I feel like when it when it comes to like the original edit style. Like the very first like tier 1 version of the skin. I think Summer Drift kind of takes that concept of it. And makes it a lot better. Because I think... Since season 5 of chapter 1 was during the summertime, kind of the like first like stage of Drift was kind of summery, kind of a summer skin, and then of course when you got to the later stages, definitely was not as summer of a skin because nobody's going to wear that many layers during the summertime. That would be torture, but <laughs> uh, I do really like the summer Drift, especially with kind of that, uh, the shirt with like the, uh, the, uh, what you call it? like the turquoise and the uh and the blue it looks very very nice or the pink i think it is it looks very very nice i like the color scheme a lot so excited to get that when it releases in the item shop i'm guessing that's going to be one of the last things they release i think that at the very end of the event they're going to be like here's the big drift bundle and here's every single summer sin in one big item shop that's probably what's going to end up happening um again that's just me speculating but i think that's going to be like the final thing to kind of end off the whole summer event. It's just a huge item shop of all the summer stuff in one, along with all the new bundles, including the summer drift bundle. And they'll probably keep that, uh, that the brat skin bundle in the item shop for a while as well, I presume, uh, since they kind of turned them into a summer skin during season three. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited for that. So yeah, overall cosmetics have been really, really good. And a lot of this podcast has just been me talking about cosmetics, but I think that's just the most exciting thing about the game at the current moment, because I feel like in terms of gameplay, uh, Fortnite's been alright, it's been fun, uh, it's just been a little dry when it comes to content, in my opinion. Uh, and maybe that's not true, they have added a lot in the last update, and I keep, I keep like, kind of falling into this thing where I'm like, oh, uh, I feel like this update didn't have a lot of content, but it did have a lot of content. The reason I say it doesn't is because I didn't necessarily enjoy the content in the update. So that's why I feel like it didn't have a lot, but it definitely did have a lot. So uh, if, I, if I ever say that this content did, or this update didn't have a lot of content in it, then, uh, then I apologize because it definitely did have a lot of content in it. Uh, it's just the fact that I didn't really enjoy the content that they added. Uh, it makes me feel like it didn't have a lot, but it definitely did have a lot of content. Epic definitely brought out... A lot of cool stuff with the update. It's just not anything I personally enjoyed. And uh, I did make a video about that as well this week. So if you want to check that out, you can as well. Along with a video about all the new unreleased cosmetics that I made. Which I think most of you have probably watched. Because it's one of the better videos that I've released. In terms of uh, a lot of people saw that video. So thank you guys so much for watching that one. Uh, a lot of people seem to enjoy that video. And yeah, that was a pretty popular one. So again, thank you guys for watching the content. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, also, we, I didn't talk about this much last week, but season two of Brim Royale released, uh, we may have mentioned it on last week's podcast, uh, but didn't really have a lot of time to talk about it because we were talking about a lot of things, especially, uh, the next update, uh, 17.10, because that was like the day before it released. And yeah, season two released, and that's pretty exciting. A lot of people seem to like it. I want to stream it more, because uh, I feel like I have kind of been doing it a disservice by not streaming it a lot. Um, but yeah, we're going to be trying to release a, a good a good update for this Friday, so stay tuned for that. Some pretty cool stuff in the future for Broom Royale 
for sure. Um, so yeah, I think this is the part of the podcast where we actually are going to be going into some viewer questions. And um, stay tuned for the end because I actually have a viewer question for you guys that I'm going to be talking about in the next podcast. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and go on to the YouTube side of things. And we got Axon over on YouTube on the community tab. Of course, I post the question of the day on the community tab. So if you guys want to answer that and be featured in the podcast, that's the place to do it. Uh, he asks, what are your thoughts on low quality maps being featured? And uh, I think he's mostly talking about things like Pro 100 and stuff. And I talked about this a lot on yesterday's live stream, uh, which is a VOD that you can actually watch still. It's up on the channel. Um, but overall, my whole thoughts on Fortnite Creative at the moment is it's very disappointing to see uh, these kinds of maps being featured for summer event challenges. I don't necessarily have huge problems with these maps, uh, but the fact that they're kind of the forefront and they're, they're the fact that things like Pro 100 and these kind of things like uh, Bios Trios uh, and stuff like that, well, Bios Trios is very fun. It is definitely a very low effort map. Like anybody can make that map. And um, the fact that they're showing that to kind of show off creative uh, is very disappointing because there's a lot of people who just play BR and I'm sure a lot of people are only playing these game modes because of the challenges and they don't necessarily play creative anyway outside of that. So the fact that this is their main impression of what creative has to offer is a bit disappointing and I think that Fortnite should go out of their way to feature some more quality things. They have featured more quality things. I think that when it comes to if they're going to make challenges for creative, they should use maps that really show off the true potential of what creative has to offer, and especially show off some summer-themed maps. Like, it is a summer event, we are having summer challenges, but why not show off summer maps for creative, especially when you literally had a whole blog post about, hey, submit your summer maps, submit your summer maps, we're gonna really want to feature some summer maps. And uh, they haven't featured, like, any summer maps. So I'm not really sure what the deal with that is. I I don't know. I don't get it. I really wish that they would kind of show off some really better quality maps. And I don't even mind the fact that these maps aren't even great. I, I really don't like Pro 100. I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. Um, but if they want to feature it, they can feature it all they want. But just don't have it be the main forefront of what most players are going to see when they when they play these modes like if this is the example that you're setting for creative maps then it's a very very low bar and i think that's why people seem to have very low expectations when it comes to fortnite creative maps in general i feel like a lot of people have very low standards uh when it comes to creative maps and i don't think that's really people who play creative a ton i think it's people who don't play creative a ton or don't make maps or just play br and only play creative game modes when they have challenges with them and uh, i could understand that uh but i think fortnite needs to set the bar higher i think that more there's so many talented creators out there that don't see the light of day because they're not making the most popular game modes and i think fortnite needs to recognize the these talented creators and show off their ideas as well and uh, I think it's just disappointing to see that a lot of these maps, while being very fun, don't really show off a lot of what creative has to actually offer. And uh, that's just kind of what I want to see in the future. Whether or not we see that, I'm not really sure. Uh, but I think it's just very disappointing to see that this is what creative is, or this is what Fortnite's, these kinds of maps are what Fortnite's showing uh, to either new players or people don't that don't really play creative. Uh, and I think it sets the bar too low. I think it makes a lot of people not have very high expectations or standards for Fortnite maps. And um, I think there needs to be a higher standard. And I think that um, I think that even though a lot of these maps are fun, Zone Wars maps are really fun. And I really enjoy them. But when they're the only things being featured, it just it sets a bad example. And uh, I, think, I think Fortnite could do better. So <laughs> overall... I hope they I hope they feature some more unique maps. Um, Alex Brooks asks on YouTube, how do you feel about all of the promotional skins like Marvel and DC? When it comes to collab skins, 
I honestly, I love collab skins for the most part. Uh, if it's something that I'm really interested in, I really like collab skins. A lot of them are very good. They put a lot of time and detail into their collab skins for the most part. Um, and overall, I like them a lot. The problem that I have is with when they, one, take up slots and otherwise things that probably shouldn't have them. So item shop is fine. But when it comes to things like Fortnite Crew, I'm a bit iffy on it. And when it comes to things like Battle Pass, I'm a bit iffy on it. Battle Pass, overall, I think that I'm kind of used to it at this point. And um, some things like like Rick being in the Battle Pass, that's amazing. Uh, but I feel like I probably would have bought him anyway. So it, it, on one hand, it's nice. I think it's, it's really hard to not speak with bias because there's some things where I'm like, Oh man, I, I don't really care for Superman that much, so I really wish he wasn't the secret skin. But then on the other hand, I'm like, yo, Rick being in the Battle Pass, that's awesome. So, it's weird. Uh, it, it's hard to not have a bias with that kind of stuff. So overall, Battle Pass skins, no matter what they're in, I, I'd say I like them. Uh, I like them better when they're item shop. Um, when they take up a lot of space and things like Battle Pass and Fortnite Crew, I'm not a huge fan of it. But if I like the collab enough, then I will kind of put that aside and be like, hey, well, at least I like the collab a lot and I'm getting it for free in the battle pass. Uh, things like Rick and getting like Iron Man in the season four battle pass, I can kind of, uh, it, it depends on how much I like the skin, which is very biased, I will admit. But uh, yeah, I think that's how a lot of people look at it as well. And then when it comes to collabs like in the gameplay i just don't like it when a collab actually kind of takes over the actual gameplay of fortnite uh i feel like when there's too many collabs it can be problematic as well and when there's too many collabs that interfere with the gameplay it's problematic like with season four and five there were way too many collab skins releasing to the point where most updates would barely have any leaked skins because every skin was encrypted and they were all collabs uh which was very disappointing uh, and Season 5 just wore me on collabs for a while. Season 6 was really good with them. They they released collabs uh, every once in a while, and it was a fantastic, and every single collab was super high quality. This season, it's kind of getting back into the lots of collabs territory again, but it's not as bad as Season 5 was. So I think it depends on how they handle it. Overall, the collab skins, most of them are really great. A lot of them are very detailed. They're very good to the source material. And uh, I like them for the most part. I just don't like when they do them too much. And I don't like when they interfere with the gameplay. So that's kind of how I feel about collabs. Joey Joey on YouTube asked, Why do you think Fortnite doesn't feature Battle Royale maps when they do creative LTMs? And um, I think they've done this a few times in the past. But for the most part, they don't really feature Battle Royale maps. And I think that's mainly just because they're not as popular as other maps. I think it's another one of those things where it's like, it's not as popular as Zone Wars. It's not as popular as these other kind of types of maps. And uh, for that reason, they don't get as many plays. They won't get as many players on their maps. They won't get as many people on, so it won't make them as much money. So they won't feature it. And I think that's the main thing about that. I think it's just not po like it's popular, but it's not popular enough for them to put. Uh, they featured creative maps before. Or Battle Royale maps. They've featured mini battle, battle Royale maps before. They don't feature them as much. And I don't think they ever featured them as an LTM. Uh, but yeah. I think it's just the case of them not being quite as popular enough. So Epic doesn't really see potential in doing that. Which I don't think is very fair. Uh, I think there should be all kinds of different maps. Not even just mini bars, But all kinds of different maps that should get see the light of day. But uh. Again, <laughs> that kind of circles back to the discussion that we had before. Anyway, Llama Man on YouTube asks, When do you think Fortnite will end or die? Do you think it will last forever? Uh, Fortnite's definitely not lasting forever. No online game ever does. Um, but I think it's going to be around for a very long time. Especially when you think about other games like the the servers for a lot of old online games that I used to play are still active. Uh, you have games like Little Big Planet um, that are still active. You have games like Roblox 
that are still active, Minecraft that's still active, even in when Minecraft wasn't as popular and it was starting to fall off, there were still so many people playing that. And when Minecraft did start to fall off, it was already years old. I mean, Fortnite is a very young game. Uh, I think it's around four years old at this point. That's still very young for a game's lifespan. I mean, some online games definitely are, are very... A lot of online games have got to the point where they don't survive as long, but that's mostly because the studios behind those games are pumping out more and more games to replace them, like Call of Duty. Usually those games are only active for around one or two years, but that's only because they keep pumping out a new Call of Duty game every single year. So of course players are going to move on to one to, to the next. But you have games like Overwatch that have been around for ages uh, and are consistently receiving updates that still have very big player bases that are still being played. And Fortnite's one of the biggest games in the world. Uh, even if it's not as big as it used to be, it's still one of the largest games ever. So I think it'll be around for a long time, especially when you consider games like Minecraft, Roblox, and Overwatch, especially. Uh, especially because Overwatch is kind of, unlike Minecraft and Roblox, Overwatch is similar to Fortnite in the way that it's kind of the same gameplay loop over and over, at least with Battle Royale and Fortnite. Fortnite has creative going for it as well, which I think will push it even further. And that's why I, I think that's why that's really important to know, because I feel like the fact that Fortnite has both Battle Royale and creative, one of them, one of the two is going to survive uh, and push the game even further than it would have been without it. And I think that's what creative is going to be. Just think of it kind of like Fortnite Battle Royale is like Overwatch. And then um, creative mode is like Minecraft and Roblox. Both of those are insanely popular games that still have insanely active player bases and both have online capabilities. Um, Overwatch is still going. And it's going to be receiving a sequel very soon. So that player base is going to die out pretty soon on the original game, but it's still going to be active. But of course, the sequel is going to continue it. Fortnite's never going to get that opportunity, I don't think. Fortnite's never going to be able to release a sequel. Um, that's because people have already spent way too much money on the original game. And the game is kind of a game-as-a-service kind of thing, where people... Like, it's ever-changing. Fortnite's always changing. And if they wanted to make a sequel... Like, Chapter 2 of Fortnite was kind of already the closest thing to a sequel we're ever going to get. Um, so, Fortnite doesn't really have that opportunity. So, Battle Royale can go in as long as people are enjoying it. And that's already going to be an extremely long amount of time. Then you also have Creative, which I think is going to outlive Battle Royale. Because... Creative 2.0 is going to be coming out at some point or another, and that's going to explode the popularity and explode the possibilities of games, and that's going to really turn Fortnite into more of a Minecraft and Roblox landscape with a ton of online multiplayer things. We've kind of already seen that with things like Tiny Town and all these different maps, Prison Breakout, to name a few, uh, kind of go in a more Roblox direction with Fortnite Creative, and it looks like that's going to be happening with Creative 2.0 even more, because people are going to have a lot more freedom to make whatever they want. So, I do think Fortnite's going to live for a very long time, especially considering the success of other games that are less popular than it. I mean, I guess Minecraft is probably more popular than Fortnite. I'm not really sure exactly what all the statistics are on that. But for Overwatch and Roblox, I know for a fact that those games have less players, even though they are very, very close. Um... And they are still, they have been running for an even longer amount of time than Fortnite has. And they are insanely popular still. And if that goes, I, I feel like since, for, in, unless Fortnite really messes up, I don't think it could mess up to the point where it'll die. Because Overwatch has also seen a lot of screw-ups in its day as well. And it's still insanely popular as well. Even if a lot of people like I have left Overwatch and left Roblox, and semi-left Minecraft. I mean, I still play it from time to time, but definitely not on its servers, which is mostly what I'm referring to. Um, it's, it's, they're still living, and they're also, uh, especially with the Roblox, the kids who played it grow up and stop playing it, but then new kids that are just now discovering it keep playing it, so it's a cycle, and it keeps going and going, 
and there's always new players entering Roblox. There's probably new players always entering Overwatch, and there's definitely new players always entering Fortnite all the time. And Fortnite has an even bigger demographic than Overwatch and than Roblox, because Roblox is definitely more oriented to a younger audience, even though a lot of uh, older people still play it. And Overwatch is definitely to a bit of an older audience, even though younger people still play it. Fortnite fits both audiences very, very well, older people and younger people alike. Uh, I think a lot of people argue it's a bit catered to younger audience a bit more, um, but I think it's pretty much in the middle. Uh, and that's why I think it's also getting multiple players from multiple different demographics. And I think that's also very important as well. So, I don't think it's dying anytime soon. <laughs> long story short, I know that was a very long answer, but I kind of just want to explain all the thoughts about that. I don't think it's dying anytime soon, and that's just kind of how I feel about that. Lava Man also asks, is Brim Story planned out? I think I've answered this quite a few times on live streams and the last few podcasts. I think the podcast before the last one. Yes, Brim Story is always being planned out. It's always being changed, it's always being worked on, and uh, it is definitely, definitely going somewhere. So, I hope you guys are excited, because I definitely am, to share where Chapter 2 of Brim is going, because I'm happy about it. Uh, but for now, Season 2, I think, has been a lot of fun, so I'm excited to keep updating that one, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and the dev team and I have been having a lot of fun coming up with ideas for that as well, and I'm excited to share them with everyone, so... Yeah, very, very exciting stuff there. And yeah, I didn't really get a whole lot of questions on the Discord side of things. Um, Sky Ripley on Discord did ask, should I play more of this season of Fortnite? And to me, I'd recommend it. I'd recommend playing the season, um, but it's up to you. If you're enjoying the season, then play it. If not, then I would take some time to play some other games and then maybe come back to Fortnite. Because uh, it's never really a good idea to play something that you're not enjoying or do something that you're not enjoying because that's how burnout happens. So, yeah, that's kind of my answer for you there. Um, But I think that's going to be about it for this episode. I've been talking for a very long time. I apologize if it didn't get to a lot of the Discord questions. Uh, I got to as many as the YouTube ones as I could for today. And uh, next week I'll be doing another Twitter uh, Q&A as well. Because uh, I forgot to do one this week. So I'll see you guys in the next episode of the Ben Nominary Podcast. I hope you enjoyed me ranting for yet another episode. Uh, I do I do rant for quite a bit. And this is, this is the best place to listen to me rant aimlessly. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully I made sense. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode of the Ben Dominator podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching and goodbye.